Today, on a very special edition of MJYG Wake Up Call, we blindside blame. I can't feel my legs. Hello everybody, this is Blaine McSkinny. I mean, Spencer Hyde. Uh, thank you, Blaine, for all you've done. Thank you for making this youth group great again. Thank you for pushing us to be better Christian people every day. Hey, just keep running. Thank you, Blaine, for everything. You're the best. We're going to miss you. But we're not going to miss you because you're still going to be here. Hey, Blaine. Thanks for being awesome, and thanks for everything that you've done for the youth group. Thank you, Blaine, for being awesome. Thank you, Blaine. Thank you for organizing all the fun stuff that we do. We've done cocoons together. We've taught together. Um, we've hung out together with all the boys. It's just... There's so many different ways in parts of my life you've been impacted in such a short time. Um, I'm thankful you're continuing to be here. Uh, you've got so much wisdom beyond your years. You even teach me things. Um, I, it's because of you I use the word salty uh, from time to time, so I appreciate that. But anyway, I just, uh, I'm thankful you're going to continue to be here. Such a wonderful person. I've told you many times how I feel about you. Thank you, Blaine, for all you've done for us. It's an honor to call you a friend. It's been an honor to serve beside you with the youth. We love you, and I'm so glad we don't have to tell you goodbye like we did all the rest of it. We appreciate you, and thank you, Blaine. We love, we love you. you. Honestly, 15 seconds is nowhere near enough time to share how thankful I am for Blaine. But he has just made such a huge impact in my life, and he has truly shown me the love of Christ. And he's made such a huge difference in my life, and I'm so thankful for Blaine. Blaine, we appreciate all you've done for our kids. Thank, thank you, you, Blaine. Blaine. Thank you, Blaine, for making these past two years so amazing and for always being so encouraging and fun. Hey, Blaine, thanks for all you've done. We'll miss seeing you at youth group. Bye, Bye Blaine McSkinny! And you have been like a bigger brother to me ever since you showed up to be a summer intern about three years ago. Uh, I could always trust you with anything. Uh, if I needed to laugh, if I needed to tell you anything that was on my mind, I could do that. And I thank you so much for everything you've done for me. Hey, Blaine. Thank you for all the love and encouragement that you've always shown the youth group. Uh, you have been and will always be a true blessing to the Mount Juliet congregation. We love you. Blaine, I'm thankful to have you as a co-worker. Appreciate all the work you've done with our youth uh, and all that you've juggled and trying to do the stuff for our website and these online videos. Appreciate you and love you, brother. Blaine, thank you for working so hard in the youth group and for being such a positive influence in all our lives and in my life. It was a pleasure to work with you, and I now know the meaning of this. Thanks, Blaine. Blaine, dude, you're amazing. I'm convinced there's nothing you can't do. Thank you for everything you've done for the youth group. You know we love you. Thank you, Blaine, for all you did with the youth group. They love you, and so do I. Blaine, I just want to say you're someone that I really look up to. You never stop working. You've been a great friend and a great um, mentor to me. Obviously not that good of a mentor to me because uh, I just straightened my hair. But, no, seriously, I love you. Um, thank you for everything that you do, and you mean so much to me. Blaine, you're amazing. Thank you so much for everything you've done for me in the youth group. You've always been somebody I can talk to, and you can always make me laugh. Thank you so much. Hi, Blaine. I just want to tell you, thank you so much for everything you've done in our youth group, and I'm really excited that we don't have to say goodbye to you. Thanks, McSkinny. Bye, Blaine. We'll miss you. Hi, Blaine. Um, Jamie Tyler and I just want to let you know how much we love you and that we're so proud of you, and we can't wait to see what awesome things you do next. Hey, Blaine. It's Miles, you know, your little brother. I just wanted to say how proud I am about all the great work you're doing down there in Mount Juliet, and how much I really truly love you and admire you and look up to you for being such a great Christian young man and I really appreciate it. So, I love you, bro. Is this thing on? Okay. It's September 21st, 2053, and I've, I've ventured too far out from my tribe this time. I'm not sure that I'll never make it back. In case I never make it back, there's something I need to tell you. I need to tell you the story about the life of a man. Hey. 
a life of adventure. I pick up his dead arms. A life of hope. And on April 17th, we had an important meeting to discuss whether or not the carpenter bees can kill you. A life of friendship. Just a fair warning, I might text you for yoga. And I should know all about this man's life, because it was mine. How much did you spend on this thing? How much did you spend on that cardigan, Mr. Oh, Rogers? Okay. MJYG wake up call. Need you up and at him about it, check what's up. And crazy stuff can happen, and you can bet that stuff won't be lame. With Philip and Blaine. His mom. <laughs> Hello, everybody. Good morning. This is not Blaine, but this is Miss Carla McKinney, Blaine's mom. And so today, on a special edition of the Wake Up Call, we have Blaine's mom here as we have uh, a blindside Blaine edition of our show. And so Blaine doesn't know uh, what is happening. Miss Carla, thank you. Thank you for coming. Welcome. Thanks for being a part of something that I think will be pretty fun. All right, let's bring this little guy into the meeting. Here we go. Hey. 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 Why is my mother here? Surprise. <laughs> Good, Good to see you, Mom. <laughs> Hi, dear. I told you about an hour ago I'd be seeing you soon. I didn't know what that meant. <laughs> you don't know everything. We've been well, cooking this up for a while, haven't we, Philip? We have. We have. Um, it, b by the way, for the record, Blaine, Carla, and I don't Zoom all the time. This okay, week. that's good enough. <laughs> just, yeah, just, just a, a one-time thing. But um, today on the wake-up call, we are doing a special themed um, Blaine McKinney episode. So we're having, we're going to have some fun. So welcome to the party. And uh, we're Thank gonna you. Have, <laughs> yeah, we're going to have a lot of fun. You may not think it's fun, but yeah, this oh, is we're going to have, gonna have this, a great time. Yeah, this terrifies me. <laughs> yeah. The Bible talks about giving honor to whom honor is due. And Blaine has been a phenomenal servant, uh, and all of us at Mount Juliet have been blessed by that, and, and other places too, but definitely at Mount Juliet for, what, about three years now, and, uh, and we're, we're so grateful for your son, and I know that you are too. We are very proud. Um, we've watched him grow in a lot of ways, um, but... Our favorite is to see how he's grown spiritually. And he's grown into a leader. I appreciate that a lot. Love you guys both. We love you. You say man. that now. Yeah. yeah. Wait till we get done. <laughs> We're just getting started. This is a great time to share any embarrassing stories or, or well, even pictures that you may have of Blaine. I, I've been digging. You know, Blaine's quite the fisherman. Um, he um, he has been going to Canada fishing for years. He also got caught up with a fishing hook in his head. It's still in his head, I think. It's right. it? lodged in it's there. It's just somewhere. that knot back there, isn't it? <laughs> By the time he was two, he loved to run. And he went through Freed Hardeman running. And many of you and, and your youth group kids run with Blaine, but he started early. The problem was he ran into walls. So at two, 
He was taken not once but twice to the hospital. All of this is making so much. It's making so that much is, sense. That is why I am the way I am. <laughs> it all makes sense now, right? Mm -hmm. You may not know this mild, meek-mannered boy, but he could pester you to death. Very much so. Mm. Yeah. To the point that his little brother, who's only 15 months younger, who is now bigger than Blaine physically, a lot bigger. A lot bigger uh, but but Miles took enough. I mean, he just took enough. And he had to find something that Blaine was scared of. Molly, his sister, reminded me with a lot of chuckling that they found it one day. It was called a weasel ball. And you've seen the weasel balls at Cracker Barrel. The ball with the motor in it with yeah. the long tail. Blaine hated it. He would scream and run from it. So one day his siblings ganged up on him. They took enough of his pestering and they threw him in the closet with the weasel ball on and sat on the door so he couldn't get out. And I went in to investigate and his sister and brother were on the floor laughing so hard. Traumatized me. Traumatized you. I'm pretty oh. sure he can't go into Cracker Barrel. Oh, he looked like he loved his brother, but then, but then we'd be in the car together. And this would be what we would get. It was terrifying. It's like your mom is on around the horn, just like scoring <laughs> infinite amount of points on you right now. She may have been ready for this before I even called her. Like she's just <laughs> raking in the point. You are an awesome adult, but you were not always the easiest kid to raise. <laughs> and, and when he came to me at 15 to tell me, you know, my friend and I, we want to go on the Katy Trail. And for those of you who haven't been to Missouri, it's a, a rails to trails track across Missouri that you can ride your bike. Well, the problem was he wanted to do it without any parents. Well, 15 sounded pretty good. The problem was he wanted to go in a tent and just let me go. Well, guess what? I'm either a good parent or a bad parent, but I let him. And he and his buddy, Andy, uh, it was what, four days across? Yeah, about uh, almost 400 miles almost after it was all said and done. It was a lot. Uh, his dad's here now. Hey, what's up, old man? Hey, young You're man, what's going on? surprising him, yay. Isn't that pretty insulting, call me an old man hey, all the time. Just for some content, context, uh, typically, when I start a phone call with dad, I say, what's up, old man? And with mom, I say, hey, lady. <laughs> he does. And, and we just have learned to take it. They're endearing terms, though. He was a senior in high school, and he decided they were going to do Shrek the Musical, which is great, except, you know, I'm not, I don't know how to make a costume. So what does he do? He decides he's going to be Lord Farquaad, oh, and man. he is. He's about four and a half feet tall there, and he designed his own costume. He has or, mentioned this. Yeah, he's told us about that before, but I don't know if we've ever seen the photos. Have we seen the photos to go along with it? Uh, the youth group boys like to pass them around. He took the shrink wrap off my sewing machine and didn't even use a pattern. He made his own costume. He... He had to have all his wisdom teeth out. But yeah. since he's been in Mount Juliet, he has started his grad work. And he's pulled an all-nighter or two. Oh, wow. <laughs> How did you get that photo? <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Rick, thank you for joining us over here. We, uh, we actually began this call by saying some nice things about Blaine. And th there's a lot that we love and appreciate about Blaine. But... Um, as his parents, what are some things that you guys uh, love and appreciate about the person that he is, the heart that he has? Uh, I mean, I love his, his dedication to serving the Lord. You know, and uh, <laughs> you know, you did baptisms, you know, and uh, he did it as a Bible camp. And you don't often see too many people cry when they make that decision. And he was crying. And I was so excited, I didn't even take my shoes off. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, 
But anyway, he's, uh, his dedication to the Lord is just amazing. It's just, I'm so proud of him in that regard. Thanks, Daddy. I think just the fact that he focuses on something and mostly that he has a huge capacity to love. He also got something else from me. He probably says yes sometimes when he should say no. Um, he volunteers and comes up with lots of ideas of things to do and, and there's just never enough hours to do everything you want to do. Um, Blaine does and does and does. When he left home, we figured out just how many things he would do at, as far as our home, but also considering our worship. We lost quite a few young men. Um, and for those of you that don't know, Blaine grew up in a very small congregation. We only have about 75 or 80. Um, and when you lose young men that are serving, it, it's painful because yeah. you lose a lot of your leadership there, young though it may be, they were still leaders. Blaine, what is, what is something you learned growing up at a small congregation that has really helped you at Mount Juliet? We have um, an opportunity and a challenge at Mount Juliet to have the attitude sometimes that other people will do it. Growing up in a small congregation, um, we didn't have that luxury. Um, my dad is a shepherd at our congregation and um, I don't ever remember not serving the church throughout the week, especially on Sundays, but throughout the week constantly. Um, I had a church key, um, you know, as a teenager. Um, but that's because of the example my parents taught me that it's not always about, oh, others will do things, but um, it's about always taking the initiative to serve, regardless of others' capacities to serve. You should be showing. Um, I don't know, showing your devotion to God and being able to always serve him no matter what, even if there's others who could do it. Um, you should always be the one to first step up. Um, that was a big thing for me. And two, um, because of that, I did things that a lot of people I don't think um, always have the opportunity or feel like they should try just from, I don't know, I, I taught kids classes when I was younger or because uh, I was encouraged to. Um, and there was just a lot of things like that that I always saw the opportunity. And then other things, and I think we all have this at whatever congregation we're at, but um, a lot of the older members at church really just became my other grandparents. Um, I sat between my grandparents growing up worshiping. I never sat with mom and dad on Sundays, really. No, you didn't. <laughs> I sat with grandma and grandpa, um, but there were a lot of other people who are my other grandmas and grandpas at my home congregation. So uh, that really taught me a lot. And I know you can have that in a lot of congregations, but it was different. What is something that maybe most people don't know about Blaine that you guys know that, that we should know? I already told you he's stubborn. <laughs> you probably know that. You might be a little bit opinionated once in a while. Philip's probably acquainted with both of those things. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I, I don't. I don't think I would characterize him in my working relationship with Blaine. It, it's never felt like he was stubborn, but mm -hmm. he would never shy back from telling you what he thought about something. And I always have loved that um, because I may be way wrong about something, and if I am, Blaine's going to tell me, mm -hmm. and. Uh, and that's invaluable. He makes my ministry better because he doesn't hold back. Mm -hmm. Even if it's like, I don't think that's the best idea. What if we did this instead? And he would say it usually in an even nicer way than that right there. But mm -hmm. he, he's just easy to work with. And uh, I've been blessed by that. Blaine was very good about reaching out and organizing even our first lock-ins with youth groups and getting those other youth groups to come here to Owensville, um, his youth ministry, so to speak, started while he was a, in the youth group saying, we're gonna reach out to everybody else. So his talent was developed young. 
but it also encouraged a lot of others to step up. Hmm. Um, he was never afraid to get out of his comfort zone. I'm not sure what his comfort zone is. Uh, there's not too much he won't try. Well, the blessing and the curse. It is. <laughs> the church isn't something you go to. It's who we are. And that set in his heart uh, a work for the Lord, not because of just what Rick and I did, but because of what we did. Church family here is family. And those grandparents he was talking about, they're all the little old ladies from church who love him in big ways. Um, Bible class teachers. And they all help raise him. Well, there, there's a lot that, that I love and appreciate about Blaine. And I, I have seen him grow a lot. Um, from the first summer we had him to where he is now, um, he's always been a great, great guy and a great worker. But where he is now versus where he was when I first met him and was getting to know him, it's unbelievable how much he just, he, he is a student. He's always learning. And that's still still happening. I know he's in grad school, so part of you is like, well, of course he's a student. But grad school aside, his attitude has always been, this will help grow, this will help me grow, this could help the church. And, uh, and that's been his mentality. He's been very tenacious um, and hungry to just keep growing. And that's been, that's been good for me too. Um, he is very fortunate and has vocalized how much he appreciates working under the eldership, having them to shepherd him and guide him, but also all of you ministers teach him so much. You're a support system. Mm -hmm. He may teach you some things, but you teach him a lot too. Amen to that. Your family's been through a lot this last few yeah. months. And I uh, want you to know we've been praying for you guys and uh, our hearts are broken in the losses that you've had. and. Um, it's, I know it's been a hard few months and, uh, just know that we love you guys. We appreciate, we appreciate that. that. We do. And it's we a lot you. easier when you got Christ in your life. Well, I want to say just a few more words, um, of appreciation for Blaine. Blaine, um, I'm thankful for you, man. You've been, uh, so much fun to work with and you have, you have, you've earned everybody's respect and everybody's trust. When parents trust you with their kids, that says a lot about who you are. And, uh, and, and you earned that trust pretty quickly. You, you became that player on the team, uh, on, on a team of interns. You need at least one intern that's going to make sure the others stay on task and understand their job and understand their role. And, and Blaine was an all-star in that regard. Very, very few interns have ever done what he was able to do there. And uh, when you don't have an intern like that, um, the whole team feels it. And so it, it makes my job a lot more smooth and a lot more fun, quite honestly, when you have somebody like Blaine on your team. And, uh, and so I, I was thankful for that as an intern, but I am even more thankful for that, that it lasted longer than just June and July. And now it's, it's been a part of my life for these last uh, year and a half, two years now. I mean, it's coming up on that, right? So. Um, how long has it been? Uh, yeah. A year and, yeah, about a year and a half. Year and a half. Mm -hmm. And so I'm thankful for that. Um, and, and I said he, he gained the respect of, of the parents, but also the eldership, you know, where they, they were willing to hire Blaine for a position we've never had before mm -hmm. because they saw the value in what Blaine brings to the table and where he, he could take us as a congregation and not just where he could, but where he already was. And that comes from a lot of his willingness to serve whatever that looks like. And so Blaine worked himself into a job because he was already doing these things to serve in the church. And he was like, well, if we lost this guy, the church is really going to backtrack in some areas. And so I, I just, I'm so thankful for Blaine. It's a, it takes a special person who, who can be in leadership, but is not, does not view themselves as being too important to wipe tables or mop floors or whatever's needed. And, and Blaine has always, always done that. And uh, 
He's just got a beautiful servant heart and probably you two on the screen are the ones to blame for that. Especially for <laughs> My mom and dad are an example of what it looks like to be a team. Um, I don't think I, I have no memory of my parents ever fighting. I'm not saying that they're, <laughs> that they don't have disagreement. <laughs> Uh, I'm sure those occurred, but my my mom and dad always showed us what it meant to be a team, um, to be on the same page with one another, um, to support one another, even if they disagreed at times. Paul challenges us in Philippians chapter 2 that um, to be exalted, you basically need to bring yourself low. And mom and dad are examples of servants. Um, they spend ridiculous amounts of hours doing stuff for other people that is not asked of them, but because they do it because it has to be done and because they love people because they love souls. Um, and those are two really, really important things that they've taught me. And just the willingness to um, be vulnerable. I felt like we were a family that talked with one another and showed affection. Um, I, uh, I hug and, and love my parents and tell them I love them all the time, but that's because they tell me um, and they've shown me all my life to support me and my siblings. And it's just a powerful, powerful image of maybe someone that I'd like to be as a parent someday. So. You just might have to find a wife. Yeah, you got to do that first. We may have another show where we make that <laughs> the object of the show. <laughs> Lynn Blaine, a wife. It could be yeah. a quality show or something. <laughs> yeah. Guys, thank you so much for your time. Thank and, you for uh, having us. Yeah, thank you. Absolutely. Thank you for raising up a great guy. Uh, that's really been a blessing to us. And uh, we can't say thank you enough. He Thanks for, for raising him up and sending him over here. Yeah. Well, and thank thanks you for taking, him. for taking him. Yes. But we are a long way away. And there have been so many times that he just, he realizes all of you are his family. Mm -hmm. Um. The Millers have been there literally to it's be his Tennessee family, mom. his Tennessee mom there and dad. But he knows he has all of you. Um, even when there's no power, he's scooped up and taken to somebody's home or whatever. Um, many offering meals. You are his family when he's away from us. Um, and that means the world to us. Philip, it's been incredible to work alongside you. I'll still never forget the fall of 2016, that call I got from you. That was just so odd and unexpected. And uh, then to be offered that job, um, I believe God blessed me with that opportunity um, and has just continued to bless me from working with the church here and, and learning from you as, as a great, great servant um, to the youth here. Mom and dad, thanks for um, supporting me and so many things, and especially in my desire to serve as a minister, and I just love you all so much. Love, love you, so It is time for the McKinney family's favorite part of the show. Uh-oh. Time for Albert England's joke of the day. <laughs> You've probably never seen it. <laughs> <laughs> You know what the leading cause of dry skin is? A towel. Mount Juliet Youth Group, um, I've already told you guys this and I hope you've known this um, from every interaction I have with you all, but I love you all so much. Um, it has been an enormous opportunity and um, pleasure uh, to be your servant um, during these times as an intern and then a, a youth minister and I am not leaving and that makes me very excited. You may not see me over in the youth building very much but I'm always here for you guys whatever you guys need especially as you graduate um, I'll still be here to minister to you all um, but I love you guys so much and over the last couple of years working with you all you have taught me more uh, than you will ever know. And I just appreciate you guys so much. And my life has been changed for the better because of you. Love you guys. Thank you.